Welcome back, everybody. WHIP, Philly's number one college radio station. It is February 5th, 2013, and we're going to do some Temple football right now. We just wrapped it up talking a little basketball team. Zach Gelb, Haley Conton here with you. 215-204-9449 is the number if you want to call and hang with us. And now stopping by in the studio is a big fan of this show, the cornerback number 21 for the Temple Owls, Abdul Smith. Abdul, how are you? I'm good, man. Zach, nice to finally meet you. Well, it's great. It's great to finally meet you as well. And I understand you're from New Jersey. You're a big time Devils fan. Rangers, Devil going up tonight. My Rangers are going to beat your Devils tonight. Hey, man, we'll have to see. I mean, last last year in the uh, playoffs, we had the we had the uh, we had the Kings and we lost. But we'll have to see. Yeah, that is true. Adam Henrique passed it uh, right past the uh, New York Rangers that got them to the Kings. And the Devils had a good run last year playing Martin Brodeur. Uh, but let's get to this right now. You had a few teammates that played into the Super Bowl. Uh, have you talked to any of them? Uh, what was your reaction seeing some of your teammates play in the big game on Sunday? I mean, it was it was great. It was a great feeling, man. I had like four or five uh, former teammates from at Rutgers in the past and from at Temple now. And I even had a former coach. It was great to see them because most of them played for the Ravens. Uh, yeah, Bernard Pierce, the Temple product, and I had Alex Silvestro. I had Jimmy Smith. He when I took a, I took a visit out to Colorado senior year. He showed me a lot of love. It was it was great seeing all those guys. And I had Chris Hewitt. He was my he brought me recruited me to Rutgers, and it was, he was he's a coach now, special teams coach with the Ravens. It was great to see all of them, man. I'm happy for them. Let's say if you're in one of their positions, if you had to give up something like a cheesesteak or anything, what would you give up to play and win in a Super Bowl? Cheesesteak, that's nothing. Man. <laughs> I, I'd probably give up a lot more than that, man. Clothes, shoes, everything. Man, that, that's that's a, that's the greatest moment for a football player to get on that national stage and win in front of millions of people. That's the greatest. That's the greatest honor for any football player. Do you think you could play in the next level at the NFL? I mean, I have potential. Uh, I'm a big, strong guy, physical. I'm smart in my position. I just have to have a great season this year for Temple, and everything else is in God's hands. Yeah, definitely. Your strength is incredible. Your size, you're a big physical cornerback, which you need now in the NFL as the receivers are getting bigger. As you look like a guy like a Calvin Johnson or even the tight ends, they have to be more athletic now because the tight ends and the linebackers, the outside linebackers now go up against those bigger tight ends like a Rob Gronkowski, a Jimmy Graham, a Vernon Davis. But let's just say this. What happens if you don't make it to the NFL? What are your plans? What's your degree? What's your major right now? Um, I'm in communications right now, so I sh- I'm uh... – in May, I, I'm I'm set to graduate in May, walking in May. And I'm actually, like, in the sports, I like sports a lot. So communications, the communications field, like, journalism and talking on radio shows about sports, like, that's all my life. Like, I feel like that's all I live for. I know too much about sports, so... I might be here somewhere with you, Zach. Uh, no doubt about it. You would be great here on WHIP, Philly's number one college radio station. 215-204-9449 is the number if you want to call and hang with us. The San Francisco 49ers play-by-play man Ted Robinson will be joining us after Abdul Smith as we're talking to him right now. National Signing Day is tomorrow, but let's get right real back here to the Super Bowl real quick. Take me through as a cornerback uh, the, holding, the, the no-holding play. Did you think that was a good non-call by the referees? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh... You can't you can't make that call in a game like that and in, in those circumstances you can't make that call. Jimmy Smith, he he held, but it was Michael Crabtree that initiated the contact. So, I, and I'm a cornerback, but playing fairly, like Michael Crabtree, he didn't run a great route to start with. He initiated the contact, and Jimmy Smith, as a corner, he was doing what he's told to do. He eventually fell on the play, and the ball was was overthrown. You can't you can't throw that penalty in that. That's that time period in, in the game. You see a lot of quarterbacks now. They throw that over the shoulder fade to the wide receiver, and it spins the quarterback. So they're they're not even facing the the quarterback, and their ball and, and their body is to the back. As a quarterback, take me through how you try to prevent getting that pass interference call when you're not looking at the quarterback. Oh uh, man, a back shoulder fade is the toughest. It's probably one of the toughest plays to guard as a corner. Like you're you're. You're taught as a cornerback to stay on top of the receivers and look for the ball and play the ball, but the ball's already in the air and it's underthrown. And so it's hard not to not to get the contact against the receiver, but it's the hardest thing to do. But Darrell Rivas is one of the few corners I've seen guarded at the best that you could possibly like the Dolphins game a couple years ago, Monday night football last year, he guarded well against Brandon Marshall. They kept trying him on the route. He's the he's probably the best corner I've ever seen guard that route. And if you watch him, you'll you'll learn a lot from it. 
Darrell Rivas, excellent cornerback, is going to be coming back from injury this year, tearing that ACL for the New York Jets. Some trade talks about Darrell Rivas possibly. The Jets would be absolutely nuts, though, Abdul, to trade Darrell Rivas. Yeah, they're, they're a circus act without him. I mean, they can't lose one of their best players, though. Yeah, man, ACL injuries are gruesome, but as we see now, like they're 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 more and more common to overcome. As you see, Adrian Peterson had a great year this year. He he's a freak by nature the, the way he performed from his ACL, and if he did it, I, I have no doubt that Darrell Rivas will be able to do the same type of thing. Like Darrell Rivas is a pure a pure a pure shutdown corner. He can tackle. He can shut receivers down, and I have I have no. I just feel like Darrell Rivas, he he has to come back from that. Like, the Jets would be absolutely nuts to trade him. I don't think it's uh, Rex Ryan's idea. I think it's the new GM. But Rex Ryan, he, he's a defensive-minded guy. He won't want to do that. When I was in New Orleans on Bourbon Street this past week, you saw Richard Sherman, who is a very loquacious fella. He goes around and he always talks junk. But he was going up to people with Bleacher Report, and he was saying, who is the better cornerback, Darrell Rivas or Richard Sherman? And people were saying, Rivas, man. Richard Sherman's got nothing on Darrell Rivas. And Sherman's a good cornerback. He's big and physical, just like yourself. But you see Richard Sherman. He's a guy that talks a lot of junk. When you're on the field, did you talk a lot of smack to other receivers? Man, when I'm on the field, I, I like to stay in my zone. If I make a good play, I'll talk junk to the receivers. But mo- most of the time, I'm cool with the receivers. But, like, Richard Sherman, he has this type of way of playing, and, and I, res- I respect his play. He he backs up the talk. He talks a lot of junk, and he backs it up on the field. After Darrell Rivas, I have to put him as the second best. Like, he led the league. seven. He had seven interceptions this year, Pro Bowl. He should be an all-pro player. He got robbed of the Pro Bowl. He, he's a great player, though, and I— he talks it, but he backs it up, so I have no problem with that. As a person that plays in the secondary, everyone admires the performance that Ed Reed and the career that he has had. Uh, he finally gets a Super Bowl win on Sunday night. Uh, what was your reaction seeing Ed Reed hold up that Lombardi trophy? Man, I, I, that, that's the main reason I wanted the Ravens to win. Preseason, the Ravens were my pick to win the Super Bowl, unfortunately against the Philadelphia Eagles, who had a bad season. But Ed Reed, man, since his days at Miami playing with Sean Taylor, like, the guy's been a playmaker, and all I've wanted for him is to win a ring because he just missed out on it when the Ravens won it in 2000. But the th- scary thing now about the Ravens and Air Reed is if they're going to be able to sign him because there are recent talks about him talking about joining the Patriots with Bill Belichick. I know that's your team, man, but I would hate to see him play for the Patriots. I get gut feeling I do think he'll end up finishing his career with the Baltimore Ravens. I like to see the Ravens like to see their players retire as Ravens, Jonathan Ogden, um, as well as Ray Lewis. And you saw what Ray Lewis did on Sunday, an emotional leader. Didn't play the best of his game, but he really inspired that team to get to the Super Bowl. And everyone brings up that that murder incident or whatever happened down there over a decade ago. Um, and people have the right to do that because no one knows where his white suit went. It just magically went missing, but you look at Ray Lewis, all-time great in the NFL. How would you remember Ray Lewis? Man, I'll just remember Ray Lewis as a playmaker, passionate playmaker, who many players in the NFL and not in the NFL just idolized. That, the, his play, his emotion, the passion that he plays with as a player is is indescribable. Like, it's rare that you see players that love the game as much as him. He puts everything, blood, sweat, and tears into the game. He loves the game. And everything that the Ravens done this year, they overcame injuries by their best corner, Darius Webb. Haloni Nada was injured for a short while. Torrey Smith, his brother dying. Like, everything that they overcame. And Ray Lewis, him and Terrell Suggs playing with tore biceps and triceps. Like, I don't know how if Tough people team. know how painful that is, but, man. They overcame everything. It's a lot to remember about Ray Lewis and his legacy. We're talking to Abdul Smith, number 21 for the Temple Owls, cornerback Temple. National Signing Day for the whole nation is actually tomorrow, and you first signed with Rutgers. Take me back to National Signing Day. What were some of the emotions going through your body when you said you're going to Rutgers? Oh, man, that, that's the great. That's probably the greatest feeling that you can have as a, as a recruit. Like, high school, senior year. I committed earlier in the summer, uh, I believe junior year, right before my senior year senior year season committed to Rutgers but it was, I had I, I remember taking visits to Rutgers Colorado I've had offers from a lot of different schools Penn State Rutgers Temple my top five it's somewhere on YouTube the video but it's when you commit man that's the best feeling as a recruit and you'll get to see a lot of those young guys the best players in the country do it on ESPN tomorrow Shiano was actually the coach of Rutgers at the time when you uh, elected to go there now he's coaching with the Buccaneers uh, how did Shiano sell you on Rutgers Man, Shiano, he's a he he's a great salesman, man. He he can get you. 
Initially, I wasn't high on Rutgers because they, they offered me pretty late. But I'm originally from Jersey. I went to school, high school in Pennsylvania. But he kept bringing me he kept bringing me into his office, man. And he's a, he's a salesman. Two hours, three hour periods. Me and my dad tell me all the great things about Jersey. And then I had Eric Legrand, uh, the guy who got unfortunately got hurt playing at Rutgers, handicapped. I had him selling me on on Facebook, messaging me, showing me threads from from s- different sports sites. Trying to get me to go to Rutgers, man. It was an ultimate film, and I just ended up committed, committing there. So let's say if a recruit comes up to you tonight and they're deciding between Penn State, Temple, and Rutgers, similar to what you were, and the recruit goes to you, Abdul, I'm a safety. I want to play here at Temple. Why should I come to Temple University, you would say? Man, Temple right now, they're in great hands and under under Coach Matt Rule. He's a, he loves Temple. He's a, Temple guy spent past five six years here. Went to the Giants a little bit. Came back. He, he's he's a great he's a great guy, man. He recruited most of the guys that are on the team right now. You got Philadelphia, which is a beautiful city. You got a good good sports team in basketball. It's just like a small campus where everybody knows each other. But then Philadelphia is a great city, and at Temple they offer both great academics and great sports program. It's a great university, man. What Perfect. was what was your reaction to the Matt Rule hiring? I was I was so happy, man. Uh, Matt. Coach Matt Rule, he he deserves everything, man. He he's been on me. He recruited me since I was a freshman, freshman in high school. He's been recruiting me. He's a great. You can call it. You can call this guy 5 a.m. in the morning, and he'll he'll answer you. Like he's he's always there for you. He's a he's a coach and a father figure. His wife his wife works here in the dining services. Like he you can tell he just always wanted to be at Temple. His heart's just in Temple, man. I know the Temple folks were irate that Steve Adazio left because he only stayed here for two years. And I've heard mixed reactions from the players. Some players love Adazio. Some players didn't like Adazio. And I actually developed a good relationship with him. He was always kind to us, always came on the show. He even came. He was the only the only interview we did in Philadelphia after he left was with us here on WHIP, Philly's number one college radio station, talking to Abdul Smith. But were you shocked that Adazio went to BC? I mean, it, it kind of hit us. Uh... That's shocking because of how fast it happened after the season. We were pre- we were prepared to have a, a tough off season, and then boom, right out right out of the blue, uh, we find out he's leaving. Had the team meeting, so we we were all kind of shocked to a point. But then um, a lot of a lot of us were there when Golden left. Uh, a couple years ago, so it was something we just had to deal with again. You look at this secondary unit for the Temple Owls, and it wasn't their best season last year. You had a lot of quarterbacks like Tino Sinceri, uh, Teddy Bridgewater, uh, Gary Nova, just throw over this secondary. What does this unit have to improve on before things get going, opening game against Notre Dame in August? Um, it, it's a lot we have to improve on, and with the hiring of uh, Coach Phil Snow, we hope to improve on that. We, we've learned we've been learning a lot from him. He's a very smart, intelligent, intelligent coach. He's coached everywhere, schools and all over the Pac-10. He's coached with the Lions and the NFL. He's a very smart and knowledgeable guy. We've been learning so much out of out of the time he's been here so far. I, I feel like I learned a lot more than I, I've I've been knowing as far as football, like plays situations he he's taught us a lot over a two week a two week span he's a smart guy so just by following his lead as a coach we just hope to learn from him and it'll, it'll carry all on the field and this is your senior season the last year you'll be a temple owl hopefully you get into the nfl um as that's probably is a great dream of yours like you mentioned before do you expect more playing time this year because i think temple could use your size and your speed Oh yeah, definitely. I, I'm coming out with the mentality that I have to be a leader in the secondary. I'll be, I we I have to be a leader. Me, it's only me and Zamel Johnson, another senior. It's just us two, and we we have to be more accountable for the guys. We have to put we we just have to be in control back there, man. This is our last year here, so we have to go out with a bang. Like, it's bad sitting at home watching all the other teams play bowl season, and I won't have that feeling again this year. Before we let you go, as we're talking to Abdul Smith, I'm going to throw a few names out to you. I want to hear your impressions to the names I throw out for you. Name number one, Chris Coyer. Chris Coyer, he's he's a leader. He came in, he came, he wasn't getting much playing time, and then uh, last year under Dazio's system, we all know he had uh, Tim Tebow at Florida, and Chris Coyer just fit that mold to a T. He's a natural born leader. He took the role. He went undefeated later that year. Last year we moved to the Big East. We had a tough time, but he still led, like even when he wasn't starting or playing, he still led. He's a, he's a natural born leader. Juice Granger, Juice is also he's also a leader. He got he got playing time toward the end of last year, 
and he he kept improving. He kept improving. You can see his improvement since when he first got here to what it is now. He's a, he's also a leader too, and the the you can tell when you see Chris and Juice out there on the field throwing early in the morning when they're not even supposed to be there. They just want to they just want to win. Bill Bradshaw. Bill Bradshaw. He's a great guy, great athletic director. He always has to listen to what we what we want to say as Temple is, as what our say is, and like when. The new coaches, the coaches left. He always comes to us and asks us what we what we feel. He wants the best for us and the best for the school. And a lot of guys wanted Matt Rule to be the next head coach, right? That was the feel I was hearing from all the players. Yeah, a lot of players just put put their input in and wanted Matt Rule because we all we all like were recruited by him. We were all coached by him. We felt he was the the, the best person to stay at Temple and get us back to the winning tradition that we had established over the past couple of years. And we felt like he was he would be here for the long haul. He wouldn't be a coach that would leave. He'll be here as long as his contract says. And you see a lot of schools going in and out of the Big East. How, how does that affect you when you – sometimes you see a school like Rutgers who will stay, and I know they're going to still be in the Big East this year, but then they leave. How, how does that affect you as a player, seeing all these schools going in and out of the Big East? I mean, as – as a as a player, we personally feel as we move to a better conference from the MAC to the Big East, we get more televised games, we play better competition. So as long as the competition is is good and is going to challenge us, and we have to win, like we really have no problem with it. I mean, it's a distraction, seeing it all the time on the news. But as players, we just want to play and the best teams that we can possibly play. So it's just something that you see and you forget about. And final one here, who is Abdul Smith? Me, I'm. I want to be a lockdown defender this year. Lead Temple hopefully to a bowl game. Plan on becoming a all, all conference player, having my best season of my college career. And uh, and uh, me and the rest of the guys in the secondary and the defense, we're we're going to give it all we got this year, man. Just tough, hard nosed player, represent Philly. Temple tough. Well, I hope it works out for you. Best of luck this season. Stay in touch. Let's get you on again sometime during the season as well. Best of luck, and thank you for coming on today. Thank you too, Zach, man. Sorry about the Patriots, man. <laughs> I'll always trying to be a wise ass there, talking, bringing up the Patriots. We got to get to Ted Robinson coming up next. WHIP, back after this.